Good morning again. All right, there we go. <laughs> Starting to, I'm start, I have to work this crowd. You know, but that's all right. We know we have to work life as well. It doesn't give you. You come to life and you say, good morning, life. And life's like, oh, good morning, you know. <laughs> Just barely, barely matching the energy we want it to give us. And of course, then we realize, like I'm realizing, I have to give you guys more energy before you are willing to give me some. You know, I started a club some time back. It's a very exclusive club. <coughs> it's on invitation only, you know, just nobody can easily get into this club. And this club is called I Have No Challenges in Life. We're currently at zero membership. Even I can't get into this club. It's that exclusive, but I feel very good about the fact. Today I feel maybe we'll get somebody from here. I have no challenges in life. Every one of us in some fashion or the other is going to, even the very beginning of our coming into this incarnation is a challenge for our mother. <laughs> she has to go through so much pain, so much suffering just to begin this journey. And from that very moment, it's one thing or the other, no matter what. Last night, Narayani and I were in a beautiful place. Our hosts here, you know, they thought, let them come a day early, let them aram se aayenge because we live in Mud Island. That's where our ashram is. Let them come a little a day early. There's a beautiful place here. I don't know if you've heard of it, Golden Swan. You know, it's just beautiful green. It's a golf course, a lovely little quiet place. So we really appreciate it. Wow, yeah, you know, let's take a little break. Narayani and I'll be quiet. We'll be able to really tune into what tomorrow's talk is going to be about. But then we had these four college students as our neighbors who decided that they want to stay up all night listening to music and shouting and laughing. And they were up till 7.15 in this till today morning. So we've not really had even a single moment's sleep. So challenges will follow us no matter where we go. You can find the prettiest place in this whole area. You can say, oh, wahan daling in ko. Golf course mein bit hang in ko. But then who's going to be your neighbor? I don't know. <laughs> what are they going to decide to do? <coughs> I don't know. There's no control over those realities, is there? But what we're going to talk about today isn't just challenges, because I think we've had enough of that. What we're going to try to talk about today is where does Kriya Yoga fit into this? How many of you have heard of Kriya Yoga before? New people, those... Uh, all right, not a very many. Okay, so we'll have to really establish a little bit of that. And where have you heard about it? Have you read the book Autobiography of a Yogi? Anybody here who's read that book? One, two, three, only three people in the entire room. Wonderful. Okay, so I guess I'll just be speaking to you guys. <laughs> You know, we've got these challenges and we're talking about overcoming them. We're not talking about avoiding them. I know if I had said avoiding challenges, we'd have a lot more people. Oh yeah, let's avoid these challenges. But we're talking about overcoming them, which is going to require something from us. And then we're specifically talking about how to overcome them through Kriya Yoga. What is this particular way? Because we've all overcome challenges. Last night we had to overcome the challenge of these noisy neighbors. We've all done it. Patience, a little bit of complaining, <laughs> you know, it gets us through sooner or later. But what does Kriya Yoga have that will help me greatly? That's the question. Um, have you ever heard of, uh, you know, tropical storms, cyclones? They have ratings. Have you ever heard of these ratings? There's a category one storm, category two storm, category three storm, category up to category five. And what these ratings suggest are the strength of the storm. What is the wind speed? A category one is 100 kilometers an hour, pe winds chal rahe. So then it says, what all can be destroyed by this much? Okay, this can be destroyed, trees can be uprooted, signposts, but the house is okay, you don't need to evacuate. Category five storms are 200 kilometers and above. In that they say you have to get out of there immediately. So you've got these storms and all storms have ratings. And I find it helpful sometimes to rate my challenges. Oh, this is just a category one challenge. <laughs> no need to evacuate. <laughs> I can stay around and say, 
and we'll see that it'll pass through. Oh, this is a category three. That means I need to do something about this. I need to act on this more. It helps me to understand that if a challenge has a certain rating, which means it has a certain strength, power, that's the word I'm really looking for. It has a certain power. What power do challenges have over us? They have the power to influence us entirely, to change how we're reacting, to change how we respond, to change everything about our lives. It has so much power that while we were going you know, normally through life, suddenly it's derailing it. It has power over our lives to destroy, just like those storms, power of destruction. Now, so the question is, can we match that power? Because that's what a challenge, well, that's what's needed. Can we match that power or not? Any science students here? All right, same people. All right, lovely. You have a formula <coughs> for power. <coughs> yes. Okay, that's really high even for me. Simply, <laughs> simply put, power equals energy over time. Power equals energy over time. What does that mean? Power means the amount of energy we can channel at any given moment. How much energy can you bring to bear in this given moment? That's the question. That tells how much power you have. Not the power of going to the gym and building the muscles because they don't particularly help when you have noisy neighbors. <laughs> Except maybe they can help if you want to go over there. <laughs> But how much energy can I bring to bear in this present moment? That becomes really the question when we're working with challenges. Our teacher, Swami Kriyananda, there's a fun story about him. Back, I don't know when, sometime perhaps in the 1970s and 80s in, the, in America. He was American. He established his first ashram there in California. Um, he and a group of three, four, five people were going in a car. And they were driving up to a skiing resort. They're going skiing. So I know we're not very familiar with snow here in India, but you know, when it starts to snow, they ask you to put chains on your tires so that the tires don't skid. So they're going up to the mountain to ski and it starts to snow. Swamiji is driving and it starts to snow suddenly. So he realizes I need to stop now and put chains on my tires. But as he begins to kind of slow the car down, press the brakes, because the road's really slippery, suddenly his car kind of goes out of control and it starts to go what's called a tailspin, starts to kind of flip around. And so there's one person in the back, and this is the fun part, and this lady in the back goes, Swami! You know, Japura time chal raya and she's just shouting, Swami! And eventually, after going that way, the car goes and bangs into a bus that was standing nearby, and the car is completely destroyed. Suddenly, the car stops, and Swamiji turns around and says, Yes. <laughs> Just completely, completely said to this lady, ah! and I was like, Hanji, bataye. <laughs> so anyway, the car is completely destroyed, and they get out of the car, and they realize there's nothing to do about it. But then Swami looks at the bus, and he says, oh, this bus is going exactly where we're going, <laughs> up to the ski resort. And he says, let's take all our stuff, let's get on this bus. So they get on the bus, and everybody in the bus is really like, a little amused by this. And one man finally says, your car's completely destroyed and your you know, whole vacation is destroyed. But you guys seem so happy and you're just coming out of the bus, you're just leaving this behind. And Swami says something very interesting. He says, in a week's time, I would be okay about this. So why waste a week? So what, is, what did Swamiji do in that moment? He was able to take what in a week, the amount of energy, little bits of energy he would put out throughout a week to eventually match the energy of the challenge that he experienced and channel it in that single moment to say, why my week you apna kharaab karu? Now our problem <coughs> isn't just a week. I mean, Swami could say I would be over it in a week. Most of us wouldn't be over it in months. We'd still be traumatized by it. We'd still be saying, meri gaadi jo thi na yaar. So what's happening is, 
each of us are able to only put out little bits of energy over long periods of time. That's why people say, yeah, just give it time. Oh yeah, in a few months you'll be over it. Why waste a few months? That's only because we're able to muster little bits of energy over all this time until eventually the totality of this energy equals the power of the challenge. So you see, we have to look at this very impersonally. We have to look at this, okay, here's, there's power coming at me. Boy, I need to meet it with power. That's really what life is about. Power is coming at me, it's going to try to derail me, and I'm going to have to meet it with my own power. And the key element here is energy. Now the problem is, we don't really know how to awaken power. Nobody's taught us how to awaken power. Nobody said, Ki bhai, oh, there is so much power abhi. This is what you can do and suddenly you can become even more powerful. When we look at these gentlemen on the stage, you know, yeah, you can say they are yogis, you can say they are God-realized masters, you can give them whatever tag you want, but what they really are, are people of immense power. They have the power to influence life rather than life constantly influencing them. And that's what freedom means. Where life has no more power over you, but you get to decide how you're going to influence your life. And that's where Kriya Yoga comes in. Um, my, my talk's going to be a little more technical, a little scientific perhaps, so if you start to doze off, just let me know. But do you know what the universe is made of? Anybody here? What is the universe made of? Energy. Energy, okay. I've already given the answer away, so this is an easy one. How do we know that? Who, who gave us that awareness that the universe is made of energy. I'll give you a hint. He's a very well-known scientist, probably the... Einstein. Oh, there we go. <laughs> All right, we're getting somewhere. Einstein gave us the awareness that the universe is made up of energy, not of matter. matter. And what was his famous equation? E equals MC squared. Chalo, we're getting near it. I know we have to rack our brains a little. Kafi deet pehle pada tha ye sab. But you know, it's like, oh wow, I read something and now it actually means something to me. It means that the entire universe is just pure energy. In our, you can say, scriptural terms, what would we call that? We'd call that prana. The energy of the universe is prana, life force. It's made up of energy. That means nothing that we think is solid is actually solid, but it is pure energy. Now that also means that you and I are pure energy. We don't feel that way. So Beotte is like, oh God, another day. But we don't feel like we're pure energy. That's because we don't know how to access our energy. We don't know how to awaken our energy. And what do challenges come to do? They come to awaken our energy. <laughs> Otherwise, hum kuch nahi karenge. If I gave you no challenge at all in life, believe me, you would do nothing. You would be the equivalent of a slug. So here come these challenges to awaken in you energy, but they're forcing that out of you. Mar mar ke. If we can figure out how can I just awaken my own energy, <laughs> then I don't need life to be challenging me all the time. I don't need those blows. So again, let's come back to E equals MC square. What does that mean? <laughs> I mean, I know we can all rat ke hum bata sakte, but what does that mean? <coughs> that in, what is M? Mass. mass. What is C? Speed of, light. speed of light. Energy equals mass times the speed of light squared. Is speed of light a small number? It's a huge number. It's a number none of us can even actually recite. Squared matlab? Double se zada. Not two times. That times that. It's a whole other reality, squared. 
दैट मीन्स इतने मास में वन ग्राम में भी देर इज इनफ एनर्जी टू हैव द स्क्वेड पावर ऑफ द स्पीड ऑफ लाइट वट इज दैट मीन दैट मीन्स देर इज एन इंटेंस अमाउंट ऑफ एनर्जी अवेलेबल टू अस हाउ मच डू वी वेट हाउ मच इज एन एवरेज ह्यूमन वेट सेवेंटी किलोज एटी किलोज वट एवर सिक्सटी किलोज आई डोंट इवन नो हाउ मच आई वे बट वट एवर इट इज इमेजिन दैट मच एनर्जी एग्जिस्ट इन साइड यू by some calculations in a book i had read they said that an average human body contains within it enough power equivalent to 30 very large hydrogen bombs how many of us feel like <laughs> hydrogen bombs here <laughs> i mean how many of us can get through the first half of the day without complaining about how hard life is and imagine that and then if i look at my nervous system what is my nervous system it is electrical electricity passes through my entire body did you know that that you are an electrical being that your brain is primarily all electrical circuits do we think of ourselves that way no we don't think of ourselves better not to but it helps to every now and then go back and say okay So again let's look at electricity every cell in our body and what is a cell is a battery cell ka matlab hi battery hota hai every cell in our body produces 0.1 volts of electricity we have trillions of cells by estimates our body should be able to produce 20 million volts of electricity how many of us feel Five volts of electricity passing through us. Again, what I'm trying to help us understand is, we see our lives as if we're just randomly here going through whatever is being thrown at us at a time. But what we contain within us is an immense amount of power. But none of us is like doing anything about it. None of us say, "I'm going to awaken this power." i'm going to tap into this power and this is what the great yogis have tuned into boy there's a lot of power inside me and i'm going to bring it out and as i bring this power out there is no category of challenge that you can't be greater than now what's the other quality of electricity So there's a full on science class here and all of you are failing miserably it is to let you know you will be marked at the end of this what is another quality of electricity electricity creates when electricity flows around it is created a a magnetic field very good a magnetic field so let's come back to our original thought the entire universe is energy you are energy therefore your relationship with the universe is one of magnetism what does magnetism mean attraction and repulsion ever tune into why so you keep attracting certain things in your life repelling certain things that you very desperately want but aa hi nahi raha hai aapki taraf what's happening here the entire universe functions on the very concept of magnetism so therefore we draw certain things to ourselves we push away certain things from ourselves we draw these challenges to us and if we have the right magnetism we can also push these challenges away and in order to have a strong magnet what do you need you need a strong electric current you need power <coughs> when i take two pieces <coughs> ye experiment karte the hum bachpan mein again we have to rack our brains a little but ek magnet lete the aur ek piece of iron lete the and we had to see usko you know kaise usko magnetic kare what was the difference between the two they are essentially the same thing made up of molecules of energy what's the difference between a magnet and a piece of iron Okay so inside we've got molecules 
Every molecule has a polarity, positive and a negative pole. In a magnet, all those molecules are aligned, north-south direction. Mein. So when they're aligned, kya hota? electricity energy flows through them. In an iron, those very same molecules, not different, exactly the same, are all in different directions. So what do they do? They cancel out the inherent magnetism. So when I bring a magnet close to the ion, temporarily, all the molecules again become aligned. And then suddenly this becomes magnetic as well. I take the magnet away, it goes back. What Kriya Yoga does and what meditation in general does, but Kriya takes it to the next stage, is it begins to magnetize our spine by introducing a current up through the spine. Thereby taking all your molecules. What are our molecules? Our thoughts, our desires, our fears, our weaknesses, our likes, our dislikes, which are all over the place. So energy energy but Cancel. No magnetism in that initial energy. Body bhi banani but jimni jayenge. Cancel. You see how, how we function is we're, we're flows of energy into the world that are constantly cancelling each other out. So there is no clear magnetism to us. So the world seems random. Because we're drawing all these random things. We're pushing away all these random things. So we're repelling it. And thus it is with challenges. So when you begin to start working on tinkering in your own magnetism, in your own energy, you begin to realize there's a lot of power inside you. Power to influence the world in the way that you would like it to. Power to draw to yourself exactly what it is that the energy you want to send out into the world. Power to push away anything that you feel is not growth producing or happiness producing in your life. Otherwise, we're always complaining, ye banda hai meri zindagi mein, oh ye, he's so negative all the time, oh, and my mother-in-law, oh, and this person. And we just think it's all random. And we keep wondering, why do they have more power over me? Why are they influencing me? Why in their presence am I going for... S and that becomes the real question for the yogi. And that's what we'd invite you if you are going to be staying on for the meditation class to start the path of Kriya Yoga is to begin to explore this idea. How can I awaken this power? How do I redirect it upward? How do I increase the flow of this electric magnetic reality inside me? And then how do I begin to see challenges or any aspects of my life suddenly begin to shift? Thank you very much. I'd like to have Narayani come and add to that. Thank you. Thank you. I will also add briefly, and I would like to pick it up from another thread. We all know we live in an age of technology, and even I myself, I'm very bad at it. I mean, every time I come close to any technology <laughs> device, it just, it breaks, something gets deleted or slows down. I mean, I have a very particular karma with technology. But we know we live in such an age that even I recognize and understand the concept of upgrading. We are constantly upgrading our phones, our computers, our cars, our watches. There is a need to have a better, better version of it, faster, quicker, more efficiently. We all want that, isn't it? We, are, we always like the latest, version of it because we know that if we have the latest version 
it won't face the challenges that our present device is facing, isn't it? And we get so obsessed upgrading those devices that in the process we forget about upgrading ourselves. And we just continue running our lives with the same software, with the same old model of thought and understanding in life, and we just stay there. And many of us want to be upgraded, but we don't know how. Kriya Yoga helps to upgrade ourselves from within. And the challenges help us to identify specifically what part of ourselves need to be needs to be upgraded. My guru Yogananda used to say, you have no idea, no idea how much hidden strength there is within you to overcome all obstacles and temptations. Bring that power and strength and energy forth. And this is what Kriya Yoga does. Its practice, which is an inner practice, cooperates with an intelligent energy that is constantly flowing through our body. So what Kriya does, it goes exactly to that particular quality, that particular positive tendency within you that needs to be developed and cultivated so by the time the challenge comes, you know how to face it. And this is something that we don't know how to do it consciously, but the practice of Kriya Yoga does it for you intuitively. Kriya Yoga targets within you those spiritual qualities. My guru used to challenge anyone and he would say, give me the most restless people you can find there, the most reckless, and let, them, let me teach them Kriya Yoga. And if they practice Kriya Yoga for two years, in the way I'm teaching them, I will teach them. In two years, they will become saints in this incarnation. Meaning that all our evil tendencies, all our weaknesses, will be transformed into divines. And this is what many of us are trying to do. I was one of those restless and reckless youths. And when I see my life, the progression that has had over the years, I'm amazed to see how different I am today than I was 50 years ago. There are many things that Kriya Yoga has brought into my life. But one of the things I find fascinating is that Kriya Yoga has made me resourceful. I find so many ways, so many unique, different ways every time that I face a challenge. I'm resourceful. But not only that, I feel empowered because every test that has come into my life, and believe me, I had a few of them, some of them quite serious, 
I have never, even for a moment, felt lost or with a lack of direction or I didn't know the purpose. Never I even felt a victim or punished by that challenge. And for me, that's self-mastery. When you start seeing your challenges as an opportunity to become resourceful in life. How can I overcome this? How can I grade myself right now through this challenge? I remember when Swami Kriyananda invited me to come to India in 2005. Believe me, I was pretty sad in Spain. My family is there, my friends were there, I had a fantastic job, good salary, uh, independent, my own home. Believe me, I had everything. And when he invited me to India, in a country that I have never been before, I didn't know the language. I didn't even know how to speak English. I have learned English by listening to you all. India in itself has so many daily challenges. So of course, it was a big stretch for me, but I saw an opportunity to upgrade myself because I knew there were aspects of my being that I needed to be transformed, that I needed to understand life differently, that I needed to expand my consciousness. And it was very important for me to say yes. So what I would like for you is, in fact, I would like to ask you this question. Do you think you want to become a better version of yourself? Do you feel there are areas in your life, in your being, that need to be updated, that need to be reset? Is there any aspect of your life that needs that? If so, then Kriya Yoga is for you. And this is what Kriya Yoga is going to bring, not just into your life, but into your being. Are you ready to be upgraded, updated? And so, I invite you to this journey of self-transformation. And I would like for each one of you, when you hear these talks, don't just believe what we are sharing with you. You have to give it a try. I would say follow that advice of Yogananda. Give yourself two years. Two years is not that much. Two years in a span of 80 years of an incarnation is nothing. Challenge yourself to become a better version of who you are. And try to discover your own potential. There is so much within us that we don't even know. And we need to discover that. So the path of Kriya Yoga is the path of self-discovery. Something that you won't depend on anybody accept your own willingness and your own wanting and desire to upgrade yourself. Thank you. Can you take some questions? Yes. Yes, in fact, we are happy to have some questions and answers. If you have any questions, perhaps both of us can answer if you have any doubts or if you would like to share anything. Yeah. 
Nobody has <laughs> any questions. We've been so crystal clear. Just like, how can there's no, all doubts have fled. Yes, that gentleman there. How many different types of yogas? Okay. Um, so, what does Kriya Yoga mean? What does Kriya mean? Kriya comes from the root Kri, which is the same root of Karma, which means essentially action. Now, Karma is action that binds. If you do an action, which doesn't mean just outward, thought, intention, feeling, any little flow of energy inside you, because this universe is made of energy, and energy can neither be created nor destroyed, it becomes a kind of, you can say, a remnant in the energy field, and then needs to find fulfillment, needs to find resolution. And that's what karma is. Karma is also magnetic. The quality of energy that we've put out is the quality of energy we're going to have to receive back in order to find resolution. And the, therefore, you know, life after life, energy continues. We continue on because we've put out so much. Kriya is the same root of action, but it is that action which frees, which purifies. And so Kriya is, you can say, a very generic term from that perspective. Um, if you've ever heard of uh, Sadhguru or Isha Yoga, they have a version of their own Kriya. So they will call it something Sudarshan Kriya. Sudarshan Kriya, maybe? No, that's, like, that's art of living. Um, so Kriya is just a generic root. Uh, the Kriya that we're following is of Mahavtar Babaji Lahiri Mahashaya. I don't know if you've read the autobiography of a yogi or not. Then, of course, there are many other forms of yoga. There's Hatha Yoga, which is the physical form of yoga. There's Karma Yoga, Bhakti Yoga. Uh, Jnana Yoga, which is whether an intellectual path or a devotional path or an active path. But Kriya is an internal process. So the idea behind Kriya Yoga is this. Any energy that we've put out, it remains in our energy body, in what is called the astral body, within our deep spine. And so when we practice a technique like Kriya, and there could be others similar to it, that very current that I was talking about, that current goes and begins to change the energy from within. So you do not have to, therefore, live that karma out externally. So if I can move the energy and change and shift the magnetism from inside, I am not obligated anymore for the energy that I have put out to play itself out externally. And so like that, many meditation techniques work on a similar principle. However, Kriya Yoga is a pranayam technique. And first you will receive a few techniques before that will make you ready to digest the amount of energy that that particular pranayam will bring into your body. So we are not going to give you the Kriya Yoga today itself because the, your nervous system needs to be ready to receive such a high voltage of energy. So our Guru Yogananda divided the path of Kriya Yoga in four stages. And those four stages is simply to keep first your physical body ready and then eventually your nervous system as well. So today, those of you who will stay for the How to Meditate, you will receive the first technique, which is called the Hong So technique. It's the first technique towards the path of Kriya Yoga. It's a concentration technique, and it's part of the Kriya Yoga path. So today, you will live with a specific technique to practice at home. And then those who would like to continue, and I'm sure Mitesh, Abhijit, and other teachers will explain that, but basically, it takes between eight, nine to 10 months to really be ready to receive uh, the initiation of Kriya Yoga. Any other thoughts or questions? Okay, well, you're not obligated to have any. We can end right here. 
All right then. How many of you are going to stay for the How to Meditate workshop afterwards? Okay. Very good. Lovely. Well, we have um, half an hour before the class begins. We have refreshments and also those of you who have not yet registered are welcome to do so and uh, we'll be around. So we'd be very happy to come and connect with each of you if there is something more individual you'd like to share. Until then, thank you so much. Thank you. It was a great joy being here. This is our first time in Thane mm -hmm. and it feels very lovely to be here.